first. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for having us. We've got Kirsten in the studio. Um, I'm actually home, um, zooming in with everybody tonight. So welcome. Kirsten's going to be teaching you these absolutely beautiful butterflies. So really excited. We haven't done, we've been doing a lot of landscapes in fall. So I think this is a fun change. Um, you know, Jesse did more pumpkins um, last week. So anyway, just real quick, want to let you know if you are brand new that you can watch these recordings after on michaels.com on their community classroom page. So if you are just watching to be inspired today and you don't have your supplies or you're just watching and you want to have some me time maybe later this weekend, absolutely can go back and watch this class and any of our other Let's Paint classes. Michaels has done an awesome job of putting this library together for everyone and it's free. Um, you can get all the product that we're using at michaels.com or in store. So definitely lots of options to get that. Um, let us know if you have questions or comments. Um, I will try to answer them and relay them. Kirsten will try to answer them if I can't. And we will try to go at a pace for everybody. Um, so, <laughs> so we know that, you know, sometimes people are painting slower or faster. So we have to do like a happy medium. So definitely just remember that you can always watch this on demand and pause and rewind if you need to go back. Um, yeah, so we can get started. So. Awesome. Take it away. Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be painting with you guys tonight. So we are painting this butterfly canvas. I saw someone ask, I'm doing a 10 by 10, but any size that you have, just, just follow along, but do the size that you prefer. But we are painting on a 10 by 10 tonight. So the first thing we are going to do, and you know, one thing we always say in all of the classes, I'm going to use the supply list that I gave you guys, but if you want a different color blue, or you want your wings to be a different color, or you want a different accent color, use whatever color palette you like the best and just follow the steps more than you follow the colors that I'm using. So really just have fun with it and make it your own. So the first thing that we are gonna do is I love to work on a dark canvas. So I'm gonna use licorice and I'm gonna squirt that onto my palette. And all we are gonna do is turn our white canvas a dark, dark color so that our base coat, um, so that we're actually adding lighter colors to the top. So using the larger brush, all I'm going to do is get a really good even coat of black licorice on this canvas. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be covering up it up with all of our designs, but you just want to start on a dark canvas as opposed to starting on white. The reason I love to do that is it just makes shading and highlighting and adding all of these layers so much easier. If you don't have black and you want to use a dark navy, if you want to use a really dark brown, any dark color for the background of your canvas will be perfect. Kirsten, do you want to just give a rundown of the colors that you have there? Absolutely. So for tonight's canvas, what I am going to use is I'm using wicker white, the licorice that we are already using, raw sienna, yellow ochre. Let's see, I've got sky blue and I think on the instructions we might have accidentally listed sky blue twice. So sky blue and then I'm using navy. So any darker blue will be perfect. And then fire coral for the peach. And then treasure gold, of course. Oh, and then treasure gold, the most fun. And this How is just- How dare we have a painting without treasure gold? I know, right? How can you have any project without treasure gold? You can see it on here. Well, maybe with the lighting. All those places that pick up the reflection, that's where we're gonna accent with treasure gold. It's so beautiful. And I'm not adding any water to my, to my paint. I'm just using it right out of the bottle just to get a really solid, even base coat. Get more paint when you need it. And again, this is the licorice. I'm going nice and slow. 
make sure that you paint. I always say on these beautiful canvases that have no, no staples, they have the really smooth edges, always do to the side what you do to the top because then there's no need for a frame unless you wanna add one. It's just a beautiful finished canvas that's ready to put on your wall. You just wanna make sure you do, do to the edge what you do to the top. So base coat your sides as well. Doesn't have to be perfect. The main thing is we wanna make sure that our base coat is dry when we start painting our butterflies. So just make sure that you don't have any um, really thick areas on your canvas of the black licorice. You should have a pretty solid base coat without having any real thick areas. Yep, and you could absolutely start with a black canvas if you wanted to, if that's what you had. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And we're using folk art acrylic paint. So super thick, super creamy. Great coverage, yep. It's the best. Okay, so I am going to hit that with a hairdryer. Um, Hopefully most of you guys have that because again, you really want to make sure that this is as dry as possible before we start doing all the fun stuff. So I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer while you guys are getting your base coat on. Sorry about that guys. I know it makes so much noise. You know, one thing I also love about folk art paint is you can see just with that little bit of heat, it dries perfectly. So it does everything that oil paints does, but it just dries so quick, which gives you so much flexibility. That's something I love about using acrylic paint. How's everyone doing with their base coat? Yeah, um, everyone's asking if we're using a palette knife tonight. Oh gosh, yes, look. <laughs> I hope that's good. Some people love it, some people hate it. But let me say this, I have to say. So the reason I love a palette knife is a teacher told me years and years and years ago, when you're using a tool, whether it be like a different type of brush, whether it be a palette knife, whether it be a scraper, it, it boosts your confidence almost in a way because it gives you it gives you the flexibility to kind of make the painting your own and not just color, you know, a color book painting or follow in the lines. It just really gives you um, the freedom and the flexibility to just try different techniques and see the different things that acrylic paint can do. So I really want you guys to like view the palette knife as that. The great thing about a tool is there is no right or wrong. You're not going inside the lines or outside the lines. It's just showing you all the amazing things that acrylic paint can do. And you're just kind of making it because it's a loose, more impressionistic painting. It's letting you um, almost have a little bit more freedom and confidence. So please enjoy it. It's really a fun tool. I know it takes a minute to get used to, but I know you guys will love it. I hope you'll love it. <laughs> 
How's your base coat coming? My edges are a little wet, but if your sides are a little wet, that's okay. Mainly you want the area that we're gonna work on the top to be dry. Okay, I think that we're good. You think we're good? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave this there as a guide. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, and I always say when you're making a pattern, putting that on your canvas is always the most intimidating for people. So there's so many shortcuts. So this is just a scratch piece of notebook paper. It can be lined paper, it can be computer paper. Grab any little scrap piece. It can even be a piece of your palette paper and just fold that in half. No particular size. If your paper is bigger or smaller, you just wanna fold. Okay, so grabbing a pencil or a pen or a piece of chalk, whatever you've got laying around, I want you to view this butterfly as only half. So he's got a bigger wing and a littler wing and almost view it like a really irregular heart. So on the fold, just like back when you would make paper hearts, on the fold, kind of eye on your canvas, you want about half the size of the paper. You want to do, let's see, is this the best way to show it? Yeah, okay, you just want to do a very irregular heart. Can you guys see the pencil on there? I know it's light. And again, it, it's not right or wrong. If that's bigger or smaller, it's okay. You're just creating that top wing. Go right over it if you want to. I'm gonna make mine a little bit more like that. Butterflies come in all different shapes and sizes. So make it whatever size. And then for this smaller little wing, again, I'm almost gonna view it as a little weird shaped heart a little dip. And then what would be intimidating about this is making this size match this side. So now we're gonna cut this out and it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to paint over it. We are gonna cut that out. Never let something like applying a pattern intimidate you. We're viewing it as one side. And then when we open it up, we have the perfect butterfly pattern. Mine might be a little bigger than I want it. All I'm gonna do, just like back in school when you would make paper hearts folded in half, I'm just gonna trim a little bit off of that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be painting right over it. I just make it a little bit smaller, not too much. And you know what? If you wanna do just one big butterfly in the center, absolutely do that. Okay, so there's my bigger butterfly. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing, either with the bottom half or another scrap piece of paper. There's my fold. Almost like a weird shaped heart, a bigger loop and a bottom loop. And then I'm gonna do the bottom half of his little wing. But the reason why I'm making this pattern is just so perfect is because then you're not overthinking and intimidated by getting both sides of your butterfly to be the same. Tips, tools, and shortcuts are the key to having a beautiful painting. And just move that around. I'm gonna kind of copy this so it's a really good guide. But again, if you wanted one in the middle, if you wanted your little guy on top, we're gonna be more about techniques today. So you can move it around and make it your own. I might actually trim him one more. How's it going? Any questions with the pattern? Um, I think people just need a minute to get their pattern. So perfect. I'm just trimming my wings a little bit. There we go. To make that and that exactly the same would have been terribly hard. 
So just a cute shortcut whenever you're painting something that's the same on both sides. It works if you're doing a really pretty tree. It works maybe just for the pattern of a flower. Um, it's an easy way to apply a pattern. Okay, I'm gonna get, just for those that are ready, I'm gonna get my littlest brush and a little bit. You can either use white or you could use maybe your lightest blue, but I'm gonna use the white. Now from here on out, we are not gonna use any water. Um, that's one thing I love about, we're doing dry brush painting and then we're using the palette knife is you don't wanna add any water to your paint. You can use water when you, when you wash and clean your brushes, but make sure you dry it off really good on your paper towel. So all I'm doing is I'm getting on a dry brush I'm getting just a little bit of white in there, removing it a little bit on my paper towel. And you're just very loosely just sketching around that butterfly. You don't wanna to use too much paint because then you'll have to work. Let me show you how light that is. See how it's just the faintest little pattern. You don't wanna to do too much paint because then you'll have to work to cover up your pattern. And you don't wanna to have to do that. I'm just painting really over the paper and just around the very edge of that paper pattern. This is a great way to apply a pattern. What size Especially, brush are you using, Kirsten? Um, I'm using the littlest one, so this is a number six. But you can use any brush to do this. Yep, and then can you just repeat again what you're doing? Yep, so apply your paper pattern just wherever you want on your canvas. And then I'm going into the white folk art and just removing as much as the paint. You're doing a really dry brush, removing most of the paint. So you almost get the look of a chalk pattern. See when I lift that, how you can see it, but it's very, very soft. And you're just brushing around the paper to create that pattern. You could I use chalk to that outline. Yep. Someone's asking if you could use chalk. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And the only reason, like, you could really use a pencil. I don't ever do that because, one, it's the dark black background. Um, and sometimes lead is one of the hardest things to cover up. Um, so knowing that we're going to go and paint on top of this, using the, the white paint is just a perfect way to apply that pattern because you just want more of a guide to painting. All of the details, the antennas, the body, all of that you're going to make your own with the palette knife. <laughs> Any other questions about the, the pattern or the paper? Yeah. No, nope, I think everybody's good. We're doing good? Okay, again, use your water, but only to clean your brushes. Okay, so I'm going to get the bigger brush. I think it's a number 10 in the kit that I gave you. But this is another thing I like to tell people. If you are more comfortable with a smaller brush or an even bigger brush, use what you are comfortable with. Um, because that's just going to make you more confident when you're doing your painting. So I am going to put the light blue on my palette. And for those of you that are having fun and maybe doing a purple background or a green background, all you are gonna need for this next step is a light and a dark of whatever background color you choose. So a light blue and a dark blue, light green and a dark green, light purple and a dark purple, just two shades of whatever you want your background color to be. And I always have white on my palette. All right, and people are asking what you traced with. So um, you used the white paint, like a very dry brush white paint, or yep. you could use chalk yep, if you have absolutely. that. Handy. But the paint works yep. great. You know, and I think, well, one, because we have it, but the paint works so well because you don't get any of that chalk residue. You don't get, you know, sometimes chalk gets really gritty and maybe it breaks off. You don't get any of that. The, the paint is just a perfect way to apply a pattern 
but you can definitely use chalk. Yep, white paint. The, the wicker white. And just remember, always use less um, than more because you, um, you can always add paint, but you can't take any off. Okay, should we do our background? How, yeah. how are we going? Yep. Okay. Again, so, we're trying to go at a pace that everybody can keep up. And if you're behind, sure. you can always go back and watch on michaels.com in the yeah. community classroom page. Absolutely. So this again is a dry brush. Um, and what I'm gonna do, so the reason we base coated our canvas with the black is normally when you paint, you add, you add a base coat color and then a, a, a highlight color and then a shadow color to build all of that layer. With the dark background, all we're doing is adding lighter colors to get all of that depth. So what you wanna do, see, you, want, you don't wanna use too much paint. You wanna go into the light blue, but never too much. Take a little bit off on your paper towel and you want to in a very random pattern. You don't wanna go back and forth like tiles or back and forth like stripes in a very random, I love to do really large X's maybe. You want to just create a very soft random light blue pattern around the edges of your butterfly. And the only tips to this is to be very loose and random and to not use too much paint. Can you guys see on there with the black, the texture of the canvas? Let me see if that, oh, I don't wanna be shaky. Yeah, but sky blue you, or a light blue also is what you're using. Correct. You get just the beautiful uh, texture of the canvas and you get all of that dark coming through, which it's so much easier and quicker to add light onto dark than if we were to build this up the opposite way and add dark onto a light canvas. So it's just a really fun, basic way to create this very artistic background. And on here, don't overthink your pattern. You can go a little bit over it. You can butt right up next to it, but just don't outline it creating a pattern around your butterfly. And I don't mean pattern, like you don't wanna outline it creating consistency. You just wanna be very loose with your background colors. You want it to look like we've been working with oils and working on this for days and days. It's a very random, never ever adding water you can outline a little bit on your butterflies. Just don't create a hard edge around your butterflies. So what I'm doing is I'm only using the lighter blue just to kind of get that first layer of background built up. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my darker blue and I'm gonna do the exact same thing very random, no really rhyme or reason to it, to just add some dimension to the blue. Down here where I didn't paint, I'm gonna go in and just add the dark blue. And while you're doing it, if you, if you decide you want a lighter background, you'll use more of the light blue. If you want a little darker, kind of a royal blue, you'll use more of the dark. This is really where just make it what you love. Make it the color that, that speaks to you the most. And if you don't have navy or a dark blue, you can always mix your light blue with black. Yes, you can do that. And you can also, if you only have navy, you can add white to that to get a light blue. So I'm not gonna clean my brush. I had the light blue on it and then I had the navy blue on it. And now I just went in and picked up a little bit of white and I'm just gonna very random. This always shows up the best on these online classes. So I want you guys to see the white. See how it picks up the dark blue, it picks up the light blue and it just 
at the same time also accents that dark base coat and it creates so much dimension. It's almost like you're sweeping really fast, back and forth, back and forth. The only secrets are no water and less is more for paint because you can always go back and add. But what you don't want is you don't want your background to turn all blue. You want to keep that black coming through to give you all of that character. <laughs> and you'll notice when you're doing, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, you'll notice as you're dry brushing, the paint is almost dried instantly. So if there's a spot like right down here, I wanted a little more light blue, you can brush right over that and it doesn't muddy at all with the folk art because one, it dries so quick and it's such beautiful pigments that it will never muddy. No water and very random pattern. That's the only secret to this. And you'll get a beautiful background on anything that you paint. Any questions about the dry brush for the blue, for the sky? Can you hold up the um, canvas, Kirsten, when you have a second closer? Can you like lift it straight up? People want to see. Yep, absolutely. Okay, let's see. Yep, here it comes. Oh, nope. Yep. yep, that's perfect. How's that? I know it's a little tricky to see the way the light's hitting it, but you can see how white, light blue, there's navy, the black is showing through, and it just gives so much texture to that canvas. To do this in the opposite way with a white canvas, you would have to let each color dry. You would have to get, you would just have to add a lot more layers to get that much dimension. Is that good? Can everyone see it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And again, don't, somebody's asking, don't forget that you can go back and watch this. Um, even if you paint along and you're like, I want to do it again, or, if, um, you know, you need more time, you can pause, but you can watch it on michaels.com on their community classroom page after this. So it usually takes about 24 hours for them to get this up. Perfect. So, and somebody just wants to know if you can kind of go over the technique again. Someone said, is it called slap, oh. slap or something? It was pretty funny. Slap. Oh, I like that. Slap painting. So absolutely. So it's really just dry brush, um, dry brush painting. And the only key is no water in your brush. Um, and you just want to go into your paint, but then just make sure you don't have too much. Less is more. You don't have to remove it all like you would if you were stenciling, but you just don't want a ton of paint on there. Yeah. And then the only other tip is don't create a pattern. Like don't go back and forth or, or stripes or tiles. You just want to slap, maybe slap and sweep. So you're, <laughs> I'd love to say you're creating kind of like big random X marks. Cause that just really creates all of that dimension and keeps it really loose. and just picking up more paint as you need it. And I don't clean my brush in between. So what I've done is I've gone in the light blue, the dark blue and the white, and it just allowing it to blend and shade on your canvas. Slip slap. Slip slap, I love that. <laughs> yep, you are slip slapping. I think that's a song. <laughs> that's I know I love that. Yeah. We are slip slap painting tonight. Slip slapping. Yeah. Any other questions about the, the dry brush and the base coat? Um, I don't think so. I think people are just painting along. Going okay. 
So what I said when we were doing the black for anybody that's caught up and I cleaned my brush, you don't have to do that. Make sure you do to the edges what you've done to the top. So I'm just gonna go in there while everyone's catching up. Perfect, someone just asked that, so. Yep, I'm gonna slip slap my edges. <laughs> and you know, the edges are always, they don't have to be exactly the same. You just wanna make sure you use the same technique and get all those colors on the edge. These canvases look so beautiful hung without a frame. And if your edges are not done, that would be a problem. There. Gives everyone a minute to catch up with their background. Yeah. See how they match. And do the top. Okay. You should have beautiful blue texture for your sky. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the wings and I'm gonna use a little bit smaller brush. This is the number 10, a number 10 or a number six would be perfect. But really, I do believe use what, use what feels most comfortable for you. And this is a time where I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this style of, the, of a wing, but if you want your big top wings to be just one color and you want your bottom wings to be a different color, maybe you don't want all four colors, um, follow the techniques, but again, make it your own. I'm gonna do this one. So we are gonna do the exact same dry brush technique, no water, and we are gonna do it. Let me switch out my palette paper, just so you guys can see my palette better. Oh, sorry, my palette paper's huge tonight. I had to tear it off. Okay. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the coral. I always give it a good shake in case it's separated a little bit. A little bit of the coral, always white. A little bit of the raw sienna. And if you don't have the exact colors, I always view it as a really pretty peach. If you wanted to do a monarch butterfly though, your peach could be a really bright orange, which would be beautiful. And then a brown. And then this is yellow ochre. So a little bit of that. Those are our wing colors. Shake that up a little bit. You don't need too much on your palette and you can always add more to your palette. So I try not to put too much on there. So you've got white always. No, 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 I need you. Okay, I need you to go sit down. Okay, so you should have a peach, a yellow, kind of a mustard color, and then more of a brown, like a cinnamon brown. Raw sienna, yellow ochre, fire coral, and then white. So we are gonna do the exact same dry brush technique, and we are going to kind of isolate these stripes into a section. So the edge of the wing is the brown, the next stripe is the fire coral, then the white, and then the yellow. But I really want you guys to remember that all of this, all of this detail, like the, the veins in the wing, um, the way the color lifts and moves over the other color, that's going to be done with your palette knife. So yours will not look like this for the dry brush. The dry brush is just base coating this to prepare it for the details of the palette knife. So I'm gonna start on the edge of the wing, which is with the raw sienna, not too much paint, into the paint and then off on my paper towel. And just that, that same very random 
very random dry slip slap stroke. I'm going to use that forever. I'm going to go right up to the sky, right up to the blue, but just darken that outside edge of my wing, the big wing on top and also the little wing on the bottom. You missed a, a surprise appearance by then. I heard it. So, uh -huh. I heard it. Uh -huh. Darn it. Get in back. Guys, that's the beauty of live and being at home right now. <laughs> Is he painting along with us? No, oh, no shirt on, just came over and bombed our love Zoom. It. I love it. Um, so All the Zooms I do at home, my dog gets in it, but it's kind oh, of fun. Yeah, I feel better about the dog situation than the child situation. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna do to, the, to, to one side what you do to the other side. Now don't, you guys don't worry if you don't want, this is why I want you to be super, super confident. This does not have to be any particular way. If you want less brown, you'll just do a little bit less. If you want more, you'll bring your base coat a little bit more, but you are just adding color to the tips of those wings. You want the black to show through. And, and some people are, oh, go ahead, what? Um, some people are asking if you don't have coral. I said a light pink would work, a light orange would work. You could absolutely improvise yep. and, um, you know, absolutely. kind of make Yep. <laughs> Thank you everybody for being understanding about my munchkin. <laughs> I wish he'd come back. You like when he comes to the office. I do love when he comes to the office. <laughs> A right. lot. Yeah. Okay, so see, they're the same, but don't overthink it. Don't worry if it's a little bit different because we're going to add another color and another color and another color. We're really just creating our base coat. And on this little butterfly on the bottom, all I did was I did the very tips of the bottom two wings with the, with the brown. So I'm just going to put color on there just on the bottom half of his little wings. God, I do love these colors, Kirsten. They're so pretty. It's hard to see, but they really are nice together. Really pretty. With the blue. And you guys don't over, don't over worry about where the brown meets the blue. Because see how I have a really faint black line? That's not right or wrong. That's just where your brown and your blue meet. Don't over blend it because you want that loose edge. Can you guys see that? I know I'm wiggly a little. You can see some areas I went over the blue. Perfect. Some areas right there, I didn't even get all the way to the blue, but both work perfectly. I'm such a wiggly. Okay. okay I'm going back down. It's good when you hold it up like that. Oh, good. Yep. So I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to clean it a little bit on the paper towel. And I'm going to go into the peach or the coral or the light pink. Remove it on my paper towel. And I'm going to just do that same exact thing. I'm going to overlap the brown just a little bit because the main thing is you don't want to form a hard line anywhere on your butterfly painting. So I'm going to slip slap. I'll probably say that too much. <laughs> We're going to have to like um, trademark that. I know the slip slap technique. But you can't. So you're touching the brown. But again, it's not. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure that you don't create a pattern. Like you don't. I think a lot of people, they're just really, really precise. So they kind of want to just go, you know, at a, at a consistent um, angle with the brush, with the, with the same stroke. You don't want to do that because you'll create almost too much of a pattern, not allowing your, your canvas, your butterfly to be what it's going to be. Okay, my little wings right here on the bottom of the big guy, 
same thing. I'm gonna pick up some of the peach, remove it, and just go right up against that brown. No water and less is more. You can see how it's really dry, like I have almost no paint. And then you just pick up a little bit more to brighten that color. But that black showing through is the magic. How am I going on time? I'm going good and slow, right? Yeah, everybody's good. Okay. People now you are more them. worried about Ben and the dog than painting right now. <laughs> the dog's not here, unfortunately, because he loves to get right behind me. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. Ben, Duke was, oh. My dog Duke was snoring a little bit ago, if you guys can hear it. I love it. It's like, this is a joke. I love it. It's nice. So I did a little bit of pink on the little guy. And now I'm going to do a little bit of the peach, pink, whatever you've got, whatever you're using, just on the top of his wing. And for anyone that wasn't that wasn't on when I when I was starting the dry brush for the butterflies. Remember all of this rich color, these rich layers where it kind of overlaps the color before it, even the veins in the butterfly's wing, all that's gonna be done with the dreaded palette knife. <laughs> so you're just, this will be softer as beautiful. Like you could even leave it like this, um, but softer because this is just your base coat. I'll add a little bit more peach. Does anyone have any questions about the little butterfly bodies? No, I think people are painting. Yeah, Doing it looks right? beautiful. If you want to hold it up again. I can do that. Oh. Like 3D glasses. So someone's saying their fire coral is really pink. Um, and this, again, I always apologize. The lighting is a little bit different. You can I always add a little bit of white to it and soften it if it's too bright for what for what you want your butterfly to look for look like. Kirsten, that's a really good point that depending, like we have a camera and depending what your monitor, how it reads, it's gonna look different. Yeah. Kirsten and I, she was just saying how pink she looked actually. <laughs> um, on the screen in the office because you know we have a big monitor so you can see yourself when you're teaching so um, it's definitely the right color it may just be your screen yeah. and virtually but um, and, and yeah. it is the, the real one in person is pink so I think it looks a it little bit more neutral and like tannish so um, yeah. it is more vibrant in person yeah for sure So I'm not cleaning my brush, not with water. I'm just cleaning it on the paper towel and I'm getting just a little bit of white and I'm doing that same dry brush, overlapping the peach just a little, but just defining the wings a little bit more with each color. And yeah, if you don't like the pink, add a little bit of white. Absolutely. And do the same to the bottom. Oh, everyone's saying it's so much fun, so easy to follow. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I hope she shows the palette knife. You either love it or hate it. Oh no. We've got, some, we've, got, we've got both out there, I hope. I love it. If you don't love it, I bet you will if you just give it a little more love. <laughs> it's like the vegetable, like the Brussels sprouts that you have to right. eat. Right, you'll like right. them. 
If you keep trying, you'll love it eventually. Call it two bite polite. You have to take two bites to be polite. So you have to try the palette knife. Twice. Well, you might have already tried it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit of white to my little butterfly. You're just, the goal is just to cover up the black in some type of very loose banded pattern. It looks funny with those two black dots. Okay, I'm gonna last color, I'm gonna go in there and add the yellow. And you kind of know where the body is, like if you wanna make a line, if it's helpful to you. Um, don't leave black open where the body is because we'll go in and add that. But I'm just gonna add the yellow. Again, no water. I'm gonna overlap that white a little bit and just cover up any of the black that's remaining. Yep, so when Kirsten does use the palette knife, she'll demo and do some examples. And also the paint we were using is folk art acrylic paint. So you can get it online or in the store. Do that little line where my body goes. But remember, don't leave black because we'll go add that on top. The reason why I don't want you guys to leave black for the body because I know there was already black there, so it kind of makes sense that you would, is because then you're more programmed to, more, to outline and to be really specific. And once we get to the palette knife, I don't want you to have any limitations. I want you to build the color and the layers without being limited to where that body sits. So that's why we're gonna add the, the black details of the body at the very, very end. So real quick, Kirsten, while people are catching up, some people are commenting that they're having a hard time finding the product in stores. So you guys, okay. absolutely, we understand. And um, we actually, if, for those that you don't know, we make um, our folk art product here in Atlanta, like in the United States, in Georgia, um, not from far from the office where we work. And we have crews working 24 seven right now, trying to um, make paint and get it shipped out to all the stores, um, especially Michael's. So just so you guys know, um, we totally understand and we hate that you may not be able to get it, but we are definitely trying. Um, I mean, these people are just working absolutely around the clock, um, volunteers from the office. So um, we're trying. It's amazing that it's made right here in America, like, again, right where we're offices. So just know that that's happening. Um, and we're trying, you know, shipments are going out every day. But, you know, if nothing else, at least we're bringing you inspiration. And we hate that you would be using another paint. But we totally understand and um, appreciate you guys bearing with us. And Again, if you don't have the exact color, you can, um, you know, be creative and kind of improvise. So that's why we like to give you, um, you know, different options. But definitely we understand and we know it can be frustrating when we're like, get fire coral. And you're like, my Michaels is out of fire coral. Yeah. And they have been for three weeks. So we totally know. And hopefully it is going to, you know, um, as time goes on and things, you know, they, they're able to get more paint onto the shelves for you guys. So but we, we appreciate you being loyal and is when it's back in stock, definitely buy folk art from us. We um we love that and loyal customers that you want to buy our product because it's so good. Absolutely. And I I love that you guys are all willing to try different because again, any blue and any white, you would get the same beautiful look, or any color for the wings, you would get the same beautiful look. So any questions about color, just let me know because you can have beautiful butterflies with, with any palette that you choose. Yeah. Okay, how's it going with your base coat? And I know it looks kind of funny. Um, it doesn't look like it's defined as much as this one, but this was just to get all of that highlighting, that shading, that dimension, and a really good base coat to work with the palette knife. The palette knife. <laughs> And the middle color is ochre. The yellow, yes, with the white. Yep. 
And again, try, you know, try Michael's again, sorry not to keep this, but people are still commenting, you know, try michaels.com. Um, another option, sure. you know, sometimes they have different stock that's available or if you didn't get to the store when they stock the shelves. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's the story if you guys don't know. So we know and we appreciate everybody being patient. Bringing right. it in. So we yeah, can I think you're good. You, what? Yeah, you're good. Go to Michael. I love someone goes to Michael's every week. I love yeah, that. loyal customers love Michael's. We love Michael's too. We, um, you know, gosh, we started doing this back in May um, and we were all still at home. And um, so it was crazy when we started this. So we've just been so thankful to be a part of this and they are um, really awesome to do these for free because, you know, a lot of people Absolutely. charge for them. So, and we love being here with you guys. It's so great two and three times a week. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So if you're still base cutting your butterfly in your background, keep doing that. No water and very random. So a palette knife. This, I love a plastic palette knife. I love that it has just a little, can you guys see that? Just a little bit of move in it. Um, Michael's has tons of different palette knives. They have a more pointy one, they have a more square one. All of them would work wonderful. It's just really what you wanna use. This is just a really traditional palette knife. Um, so this is my favorite. We always get questions of, about what would work instead of a palette knife. And gosh, Kira, we've said everything from an old gift card that's that's cut into a very similar shape. Um, we've even said like the back of a plastic spoon, maybe a bigger one that's got a little bit of a flat bottom. Um, tons of cake decorating uh, tools or like little spatulas, um, little cake decorating knives, anything that's just got a flat edge, um, not too big, but a flat edge and maybe has a little bit of flexibility, not a ton, um, but you don't want like a big fat metal butter knife. That wouldn't probably be ideal. So just a little bit of movement and then just a, a flat bottom. But again, it can be wider, more pointy, some are more triangle, but any basic palette knife works perfect. Okay, so the key to the palette knife is really only a few simple things, a really light grip, you don't wanna mash into your canvas, mash into your paint, mash into your details. You just want a really light grip. You're almost, when we use it tonight, you're almost skimming across your canvas. I always like to say, and I know it sounds kind of funny, kind of like you're lightly putting peanut butter onto your toast. So if you view it that way, it's kind of just a little bit more user-friendly way to describe it because everybody does toast. So a very light, a really light touch and you want to stay flat on the bottom. You don't want to work up on the side or you don't want to work on the tip like a brush. You just want to stay flat against your canvas. I'm not using, I'm not adding any paint, but I just want you guys to really just get confident about almost view, <laughs> this is funny, almost view this as a giant piece of toast. Like, and if you work this way, you're just spreading butter on the top. If you're doing it within your butterfly wings, you're really just using it almost like you're decorating a cake, you're frosting a cupcake. I think that just takes some of the intimidation out for people. Okay, so we are going to, tonight's a little bit different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the tip of our palette knife. So I am gonna load this brown color first or whatever color you chose for the outside of your wings. And when you load your palette knife, you just pounce into your paint and just kind of move out from your puddle of paint a little bit so you don't have too much on there. You, let's see if I can do this. You yep. want to have a good amount on there, but you don't want it to be dripping off. Can you guys see that kind of? See how it's on there, but it's not dripping off the palette knife. So you just pounce it in and you pounce it out. So for the butterfly wings, all this detail, what we're gonna do, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's pretend, can you guys see this? So here's our wing, that's a bad wing, but there's our <laughs> wing. 
I know, isn't that terrible? So what we're gonna do tonight is starting on the edge of the wing, we are just gonna press down and pull. So I'm gonna pick up paint as I need it. You're gonna just very lightly and almost just flick your palette knife back and up so it comes off your canvas. So it creates all of that texture. Some of the white shows through and it just gives you all of that dimension like if you were using oil paints. Is that helpful? I know it's a terrible wing. No, that's a great, I think people wanna see you practice. So I think that's great. You can see really great on the white before you get on the paint already. Let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> see why I make a pattern. So into my paint, not too much, but you don't wanna remove it. And we're gonna start with our outside color. So when we do it on our canvas, you're just gonna kind of flick where your base coat is, but you're just adding another layer of that same color, putting it down and just kind of pulling it forward. I'm working at a weird angle. I can't move my palette paper. But see how you're using the tip of the palette knife to define the edge of your wings and just bringing it into the pink. Let me get a little bit more of that on there. And it's the and one, um, Sienna, raw Sienna? Correct. All right. And another great thing I love to tell people, so I couldn't do it with this because it's so gigantic, but move your canvas to what is most comfortable with. You know how someone who's a left-handed person turns their paper a certain way. Some people turn their paper that way. Be flexible and play with it. Move your canvas to what makes working with the palette knife that much more natural. Don't, don't, um, like, don't let the palette knife determine where your canvas is going to be. Let your canvas determine what's most comfortable for your palette knife. Does that make sense? A little bit. I just don't want you guys to be nervous because the palette knife is such an amazing tool with so much possibilities. So I'm going to start on this outside edge of my butterfly's wing. I loaded my palette knife and I am just going to start on the edge and just almost press and pull. Press and pull. You don't want to create a pattern so you want to overlap just a little Pick up paint as you need it. But see, and let's see if you guys can see this. See where your dry brush still shows. Let me wiggle that a little. Your peach still shows. It's just giving you another great layer of paint. It's hard to tell because it's a little bit different of a color when the light hits it because it's wet. But you can see it's the same color over your dry brush area. So pick up more when you need it. Remember, turn your canvas to make the palette knife easier to work with. If you've got too much on there, you can kind of go in and don't, don't load any more paint, but just kind of go over it. And you're using the ochre, but you could use the treasure gold, someone was asking. Absolutely. You can see on this one, if that's what, like, let's see with the light. Yeah, you, you could, could use, I'm using raw sienna, but you can see the gold we're just gonna highlight with, but if you love more of the gold, absolutely. Use, um, use the treasure gold instead of this. Same technique, load your palette knife exactly the same. That treasure gold, gold works just like any acrylic paint. But see, you're just going to put it on the edge of your wing and you're just going to kind of pull and smear it towards you. If you've got too much on there, just remove it. So there's that. And then Make it easy on yourself. I'm going to, it's natural for me to pull towards me. Some people like to go left to right, but I like to pull towards me. So that's why I keep rotating my canvas.
you don't want to struggle with the palette knife because it's hard to get to the spot on your canvas. You don't want to cover it completely. That's why you're lifting it as you get onto the peach because again, you want all of that dimension where the colors meet. Is that showing up on there? I think so. And don't worry, like you can see right there where I went a little bit heavy over the blue, but that's okay. Because of that dry brush base coat, it just looks like another dimension in the wing. I'm gonna do the same. I've got this brown color at the bottom of my little butterfly at the bottom. I'm just gonna use a little bit less of the tip of the palette knife, but the exact same technique. Just pulling that into the peach to add a richer tone of that color. Same color that's dry brushed underneath. But the palette knife applies more paint. So it's giving you a medium, a light, and a dark value of that same color just by how you apply it. So the palette knife, I always just clean until the very, very end. I always just clean it on a paper towel. So you get all that paint off. And now we are gonna do the exact same technique with our second dry brush color, which is the coral. Now that we're into the body of our wings, I want you guys, turn your canvas as you need it, load into the pink and offload just a little. Oops, I picked up some of the brown. I'm gonna get that off of there. That's just cause it's too close on the palette. So I'm gonna go in there. So with my little butterfly here, we were really specific with our brown because our brown color defined the edge of our wings. So because the next three colors that we're doing don't really define the edge of anything, they're just another beautiful band of the wings, don't be as specific. So when you, so you're gonna load onto there and you're gonna just be a little bit more random, blending the brown with the pink or with the peach, whichever you choose to use. You can go over it a few times just to soften the color, but you're almost just pressing colors together. You can do it right there. You're pulling towards you just like you did with the brown, but you're just being a little bit more random because you're not defined, defining an edge like we were on the edge of the wing. So I'm going to start right here on this little top wing. I'm a little bit in the brown, a little bit on my dry brush. And I'm just going to go in there. And again, putting down and pulling towards me, but not mashing super hard into your canvas. And see how the same color, so like our dry brush color and our top color, exact same color but you're getting so many different values and shades just because of the way we're applying the paint. If you get a hard edge, you can just kind of go over it. If you've got too much, you can scrape a little bit off. Oh, I got a lot right there, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go over it a little bit and soften that. Then I'm going to turn my butterfly all the way around because for me, it's easiest to pull towards me. It's like decorating a giant cookie. Turn it a little bit more so I can pull towards me. 
Everyone's so quiet. Is that good or bad? Yeah, literally yeah. everyone's just saying thank you so much. Um, just a ton of compliments. Like, everyone's having so much fun. Um, it's so quiet. I look up and everyone's gone. <laughs> I know. I hate to interrupt you, but some people have to jump off and they want to see next week's painting. They want to what? See next week's painting. Oh, nope. Let me see. I stuck it back here. So Andy will be here next Monday. And he is teaching an adorable tree. Oh, is that too close? There we go. No, that's perfect. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely. I think the time change, you know, depending where people are, they're like, we have to jump off, so. Understand. Yeah, everybody's enjoying. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the peach on this little guy at the bottom. I'm going to go from the brown into the dry brush coral. And the fun thing about this, this style of painting, is it's just so loose and doesn't have to be specific, doesn't have to be exactly like any of the other paintings. You're just really learning technique and ways to do this type of layering and this type of painting. And it all comes together beautifully at the end. So the first, the first two colors are done. I'm gonna do the same thing with the white. I cleaned off my palette just on the paper towel. I'm gonna to load white onto the edge of my palette knife. Turn that so it's comfortable and just pull that into the, into the yellow. And everybody's asking where they can watch this after. So if you go to michaels.com to the community classroom page where you signed up to take this class, um, right below there, there is a library of all the classes. You can watch them on demand. So it's a great resource. And then also we have not mentioned um, uh, that we have an amazing Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. So I know a lot of you have joined in our members, but you definitely want to check that out because it is also a great resource for online education. So it's, um, face, it's a Facebook group and it's Let's Paint with Plaid. So you guys definitely want to check that out. And then last is the yellow. Yes, anybody can join the Lunch and Learn. So someone's asking on this um, Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, we have a Lunch and Learn on Tuesdays and Thursdays and anybody is welcome to tune in on Facebook and watch along. Looks good. Our butterflies look a little funny, but when they get their black bodies, that defines all of it. It just comes together so beautiful. But I hope you guys, I really hope you're loving how the color, it's so much richer when you use the palette knife, it's different than when you use the dry brush, but you just have all of those beautiful layers and textures. Guys, I'm trying to pull up the link for the group. So I will post it here in a second. How's it going with speed? Am I going a good pace? I think everybody's good. Everyone's painting along. Any I think we're questions perfect. or any? How's it going? Good. So, for, so if there's no questions on this, so what, um, 
what you can always do like this background the blue is just dry brushed but a fun way to just kind of add a little bit of detail and if you're doing your butterflies don't worry about it um but just to really have a little bit of that palette technique on your background is i'm just taking the same palette knife cleaning it off picking up some of the dark blue or whatever the dark value that you used for your background and just along the edge. You don't wanna mash down, you wanna be really soft and you wanna stay flat with your canvas. I'm just gonna just lightly go maybe just around the edges, just on this large area, just to just add a little bit more, a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna go right into that light blue and do the exact same thing. Very loosely skimming that palette knife. Not too much because you've got such a beautiful background already built up, but just to kind of combine the two techniques. See how it just adds a little bit of richness to the edge of the to the edge of your background. I'm going to dry that just with my paper towel. Again, I'm not going to use any water. And now we're going to use, and this is just so that it's got that beautiful metallic finish. We are going to add some of the treasure gold. It works exactly like any acrylic paint. It works with brushes, with any tool you would use for painting. Oh, mine was sealed. Sorry. Let me get that off. But look, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm just going to pour that onto my palette and treasure gold comes in so many beautiful colors. I'm just using the traditional gold, but there's rose gold, there's blues, there's purples, there's an antique gold. They're all as beautiful as this one, this traditional gold. But all I'm going to do is just like we did before, I'm going to load that onto my palette knife, load a little bit on and a little bit off. You don't want it dripping. And I am just going to softly kind of put it over the yellow. The yellow is a little bit wet, so you don't want to blend it together. You just want to use that same technique and just lightly accent that yellow. If it gets a little bit on the white, that's beautiful because, again, it's just the metallic of a butterfly's wing. Move your canvas so that it's really comfortable to work with. And you're just going to accent as much or as little with the gold metallic. You can add a little touch to the edge of your wings if you want to. If you don't, absolutely don't. I'm just going to do it because it's so pretty on, on the screen. It's a great way to show using the palette knife. I'm going to add a little bit over the yellow to my butterfly on the bottom. Oops, I got too much maybe a little bit to the edge of his little wings. For anyone that's actually working with it at home, it does not do it justice how beautiful the metallic is on the screen. It is the most beautiful metallic. It looks really pretty. Like it is absolutely beautiful and shimmery. So I added that on there. So now just a little tip, something that's kind of fun when you're using the palette knife. So all these little veins, which you would go back traditionally and get a really thin liner brush and you would add each one. What I'm gonna use is that flat, sharp edge of the palette knife, not the flat bottom we've been working with, but that flat edge. And I am just gonna, you wanna get a little bit up on your palette knife so it's got some stability. See how I'm holding it? Put your finger on there for some stability. And I am just gonna pull through that paint. See how it's, it's hard to see on there. See how what it does is it almost scratches the paint and it creates the veins and the details in your butterfly's wing. Oh, I love that tip and technique. See how it's doing it? The metallic uh, is so shiny, it's hard to see. That's Move really awesome. Back. Move your canvas so that it's comfortable. So you're pulling towards you. 
but you're really just kind of scraping through the paint that you applied. Can you pull that up, Kirsten, and show everybody? Yes, absolutely. So, oh yeah, it's really let's pretty. See how you can see it the best right there. See how it creates the veins. You can see it right there, really pretty. How it creates the veins and the details in the butterfly's wing. So move your canvas as you need to, but you're just going to pull through that paint. That looks awesome. The great thing about that is sometimes like the, the end details of a painting are very intimidating because you like what you've got so far. So using the palette knife is so much more forgiving than if you were to use a liner brush and add those details. Okay, so it really looks like you've just got a bunch of beautiful colors. We are gonna add the magic with the black. So this is just folk art licorice. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fold this up. And you were just scraping off the paint. You weren't adding any. So that's nope, a new technique we haven't done. Yep, I'm just scraping through what we've added with our palette knife and it just softens that and creates that detail. It's great for details in a tree, um, for details in a flower. You can scratch more or less, but it's just a great way to add a little bit of, of detail. Okay, so I want you guys to do whatever is most comfortable. Using your smallest brush, this is a number six flat. What you can do is pick up a little bit of the black, black licorice. Again, no water in your brush, just paint. It's okay if you washed it and dried it, but just dry it as good as you can on the paper towel. And so just as a guide for placement, I want you to do a little oval where your wings meet for the butterfly's head. And then I don't want you to draw a straight line and I don't want you to create a perfect pattern for the body. I just want you to wiggle your brush through the center, getting thinner at the bottom. Because what I don't want you to do is we've got such a loose, soft, beautiful layered um, technique. I don't want you to get a clean lined pattern for the body because I don't think it would match your wings. So just a soft center. He's got curves. He's got curves. <laughs> Make his head a little bit larger if you like that, but not a perfect shape. Same with your little guy at the bottom. I want you to do a larger oval using the licorice and then just wiggle that black thinner at the bottom. What I want you to do then is pick up the palette knife, load just the end with the black, and I just want you to softly pull just like we did with the wings, just to soften the edges of your butterfly's body. You're just adding a little bit more paint and softening those edges. And just on a few, turn your canvas. For this, I like to pull towards me. I'm just gonna pull a little bit of that black out, just a few spots. Can you see where the palette knife pulls just a touch of the black? I'm gonna turn it so I like to pull towards me. That's what's most comfortable for me. Oh, that one did it perfect. So you're just adding a little bit of detail by pulling that palette knife from the black into your wings. Same with your little butterfly at the bottom. Well, that metallic is so shiny, it's hard to see. And then what I did here, and this is totally up to you guys. I want you guys to have fun with it at this point. See how I've got a little bit of black around the wing? That is using the palette knife. And I'm just loading the edge 
And actually, I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to draw. Let me see, where'd that Sharpie go? I'm going to draw a wing, just like before. And what we're going to do for this is I'm just going to load the palette knife in the paint and a little bit off and very soft. I'm just going to skim the edge of that wing. Skim the end edge of that wing, almost softening the line between the wing and the background. So I'm going to pick up that paint and I'm just going to softly go over, pick up paint as you need it. It just really, can you see it on there? It yeah, kind it of beautiful. defines the edge of the butterfly's wing. And I'm using the flat bottom, loading in and then taking some of the paint off, but just kind of skimming it, going in the direction of the wing, but not pressing down and outlining it. Because where the palette knife kind of jumps around and loses from a lot of paint to less paint, that's what you want. You want those imperfections in the edge. Can you see that on there? Yeah, can you hold it up? Yep. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, more paint, less paint, but that's what you want because you want it, you want it to kind of create the details for you. I'm gonna turn it that way, load into the black, load out a little bit. Oh, I had a little too much on there. Just going around the edge, outlining, but not dragging to where it's a solid line. Pick up paint as you need it. Just skimming around the edge of that butterfly. And I'm gonna do the same on this little guy, up and around, but letting the paint run out on the palette knife up and around. I know I turn my canvas like crazy, but once you get used to, and even when you're not using the palette knife, whether you're using a brush, whether you're base coating, um, whatever you're doing, really use that moving your canvas to make the technique that you're doing that much easier. Can you see where there's a little bit less, a little bit more, but that's what you want because it's where the light, the shading and the highlighting would naturally happen. So using our flat edge again, I'm just gonna get into that black, not the bottom, but the, the thinner flat sharp edge. I'm gonna load the licorice on there and I'm just gonna drag that into the little guy's head, creating his antennas. If you want to use your thinnest brush, absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, I just like to use the palette knife because it just creates a little bit different look. I'm just going to pull the edge of that palette knife, loading it with just the black into the little butterfly's body to make those antennas. And go over it a few times if you want them a little thicker. And then I'm just gonna dot the end of the brush handle into the black and dot that to create the little detail of the butterfly's antennas. And then on this one, and this is if you guys want to, I use this, this same technique. I get a new paper towel. Oops. Cleaning it off just with the paper towel, not with any water. Okay, and just a little bit more of this beautiful treasure gold. You only need just a touch. I'm gonna pounce my palette knife just like we've been doing into the paint and then taking some of it off and then just very softly, just going skimming just very lightly around the very edge of your canvas just to kind of define the edges and create the appearance of a frame. More of a distressed, almost like a gold leaf edge. I love the gold and the navy. I know, isn't that beautiful together? But you don't want it to be a stripe, so you just want to be really soft-handed and just stay flat with your canvas. 
let the palette knife kind of jump across your canvas, just softly accenting the edge of that edge of the canvas. How does it look? It looks so good. Does anybody out there have any questions at all? No, I think everybody's just saying thank you for a great class. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great one. Um, can So Kirsten will actually be here on Wednesday teaching our afternoon yep. class. She's doing a beautiful fall welcome sign. So you definitely want to oh. sign up for that. It's on yeah. my um, um, so she'll be here Wednesday afternoon teaching that. It's beautiful and you'll definitely want it. Um, especially now that like Halloween's over, it's a great transition sign for yes. fall. So Perfect. She'll be here. And then Andy will be here next Monday um, teaching the pine trees, the little okay, evergreen so guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he'll be here next Monday. Perfect. And that's the treasure gold. Look how beautiful that is on yeah. the side. Looks like a frame. I know. Beautiful, huh? You guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michaels. Don't forget to you. go to the community classroom page and sign up for more classes. You can watch um, all the classes on demand. Check out the Let's Paint Facebook group. Thank you, Kirsten. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Michaels. It was fun. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, everyone.